Butterfly gon' recap this and say God he caught a 30 on the dime road. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'ma tell you what happened. He got smoked. That was crazy out there. Time SP to nobody that knows body. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the butterfly. We used to rapping like that. I yelled neighborhood once. I yelled neighborhood. I yelled neighborhood once in the locs around. It'll look like a concert outside if I scream rolling loud. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, that notification gang, etc., etc. Don't let none of that get too far ahead of you. I hope all is well with every single one of y'all and you're moving right, not moving light. Uh, shout out to none other than Sue Surf. I feel like it's warranted to speak about his accomplishment. Being selected to perform on Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud normally happens in Miami. It's happening. It's happened in New York. They go to different places, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the huge... One of the biggest concerts of the year. You have people like Nicki Minaj has been on Rolling Loud, ASAP Rocky, A Boogie, uh, Lil Baby, Lil Uzi Vert, the Money Bag Yo's, the Yo Gotti's. If you think about it, the biggest concert series is Rolling Loud. Everybody knows that. So let's just take a step back to move forward. When Sue Surf battled New Jersey twerk, he had the life of pie. Uh, all I do is gangsters. Uh, the, I make a phone call and the locs around. Make one phone call and you hear. It's, it looked like a concert outside if I scream Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud had actually retwe had tweeted that bar. You know what I'm saying? It will look like a concert outside if I scream Rolling Loud. And now Sue Surf, who, you know, has had ups and downs in battle rap. You know, most recently, his battle with Cortez, everything that came with that. It was exciting, enlightening, frightening, striking, hyphen, Tyson battle. And you know, it had everything that was to it. And I feel like when you do something as significant as be selected to perform, or because not everybody, it's like Funk Master Flex, not everybody can come down here, not everybody could be on Rolling Loud. And to have that kind of platform select you from a musical perspective, this has nothing to do with battle rap. It's all musical. It's showing appreciation to what you've been putting out there for the culture and for things like that. And, you know, I, 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 I wanted to say it here, you know what I'm saying, on camera because I've made a lot of money with Sue Surf. Not with him personally, but in blogs, recapping battles, news with him, ups, downs, etc., etc. Uh, and, you know, he's the type of person that when it comes to being scrutinized, he knows he's going to get scrutinized. He knows at times he may even get hated. He knows that with the talk and the things that he does, it comes with a price. But he's embraced that role, and now, you know, he's, he's shining in the light, and he's on Rolling Loud. That's a big concert. On, his, on the set that he will be on alone, which is the Sunday set, the headliner is Future. Then you got 21 Savage, Big Sean, Pusha T is on there, St. John is on there, Fat Joe will be on, Benny the Butcher will be on his set. Uh, I'm just looking through some names. Uh, Dream Dog, Sue Surf is going to be on there, and there's a bunch of, you know, other names on there too, some of that I haven't really heard of, but, you know, they all have a buzz in some way or another. But to get picked up for Rolling Loud could be the start of a career. And I always said that, when it came to surf, you know what I mean? He has the charisma and the talent to me to be able to go to the next level. I remember when he was trying to get on um, XXL cover and things like that, and he was doing his music runs, and he had the, the whole tape with Mozzie, and he had a you know a song with Jada Kiss, and he's definitely one that pushes the music. He has the bars on I-95 freestyle. He's gonna easily perform that in front of the biggest crowd that he's been in front of, and if you are media or battle rap fan or even just a battle rapper in general you should be supportive and happy to see where he's going with this because at the same time when we could get up here and we could talk about whether it's stolen bars or this that and the third we could talk about that shit when somebody gets picked up for the biggest look you gotta support that too you gotta talk about it that too i really don't even care this is not even about views this blog is just about saluting someone who's just been able to pick up one of the biggest opportunities that he's going to pick up personally and professionally, you know what I'm saying? And I already saw him saying he's going to make sure he brings smack out and things like that, you know what I'm saying? This is all about what Battle Rap is trying to cross over into mainstream. You got mainstreams of people, 
hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people who don't know about battle rap, don't watch battle rap, and to see somebody be able to take those steps, it means a lot. Um, you know, he's, he's gonna definitely have his set, he'll have his music, and hopefully, you know, he's ready to do his thing. But I would like to see Surf in a major situation, you know what I'm saying? A major deal, bigger features, bigger production, and see where he goes with it. Because I, the music is, to me, I, I rock with his music. I rock with his bars on i 95 freestyle. I rock with the, uh, with the mixtapes, make sure you kill me, you know, uh, and all the other ones, 725, I got them all, you know what I mean? So to support someone in that manner, it means a lot. And I really, really hope that he takes this opportunity to make the most of it because there have been people who have performed on Rolling Loud who have went on to do big things. And I love certain people's sets. Like I still, I still to this day watch Young Glock, I mean, Young Dolphs, rest in peace, Young Dolph, Key Glock, I said Young Glock, but it's actually Young Dolph, rest in peace, last set on Rolling Loud with Key Glock and a lot of them songs that they perform was legendary and it's gonna be a huge crowd and I hope that he definitely does his thing, you know what I mean? So that'll be that, but salute to Sue Surf. Uh, we're moving on. I know y'all was watching last night. The whole world was. Game five of the NBA Finals. I, I, I know people want me to talk about sports a little bit more. If you're here for the battle rap shit, you know, salute to Sue Surf being selected for Rolling Loud, et cetera, et cetera, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I seen game five last night uh, at this point, I honestly think the Warriors will win the championship in six. I think they'll win it in the next game, but who knows? It'll probably go seven. Uh, I think that the Celtics had a great, ha are having a great run. I think they made it further than anyone predicted them to make. But at this point, Ime Udoka, who's a great coach, you know what I'm saying? Don't, I don't take nothing away from him. Has made a lot of adjustments and have tried to do the things that he could do. But when you got a guy like Steph Curry, right? who goes 0 for 9 from three-point land and like 7 for 20 or something from the field. One of his not good games. And they still win by double figures, you got a huge problem. Andrew Wiggins has stepped into his role. You know, he don't have to do nothing but play defense, grab rebounds, and score. It sounds a lot, but when you remove the first layer of having to be the number one guy, having to make the big shot, having to be the, the, the franchise player, that's a lot of pressure when you select the number one overall and people are thinking, you know, we drafted somebody else number one overall, they went on to be LeBron James, we drafted Kyrie number one, we expect, they expected you to fill those shoes and when, no, when that didn't happen, he got traded in Minnesota, then he got traded to Golden State, but I love what Andrew Wiggins is doing. Playing defense like hell on Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, you know, forcing them to the left, keeping them in the middle of the floor, preventing Jason Tatum from scoring 50, it's amazing. Um, I think Boston will continue to grow, continue to do its thing, but I just think for this year right here, uh, Emil Doka has met his match in coaching, and it's not like that's a bad thing because Steve Kerr is a fucking wizard. Like, he can literally change up the game plan. Like, I've seen Emil Doka change the game plan. He'll go from man, he'll throw doubles, he'll go 1-3-1, he'll go traps, like he does all of this stuff. And I've seen Steve Kerr neutralize it with having uh, taken Kevon Looney off the floor, taking the big men off the floor, leaving Draymond out there with uh, Otto Porter, uh, uh, Andrew Wiggins, Kerr, I mean Curry and Clay, and then you have Jordan Poole who could come off the bench. Jordan Poole, he don't like he's so unfundamental, but he's a walking bucket. He can walk into the game and he can score at any level at any time. He can make a three, he can make a mid range, and he can get to the hole. He still got a lot of work to do, fundamentally. Like when you first see Jordan Poole when he came on the playoffs, he was dropping 30 on niggas. You were like, yo, this might be a max player. But as the game went on and as the series went on, you see a lot of the holes. He still takes a lot of bad shots. Uh, he still takes a lot of contested threes, but he makes them though. He makes some of them. So I see the reason why uh, people would be rocking with, uh, with what he does. And he's a good compliment. You know, if Klay Thompson can get his 20, Eight, it's game six, Clay coming up too. Game six, Clay Thompson. And you think Clay, you think Steph Curry's going to be 0 for 9 in the next game? I, I highly doubt that. I don't think that's going to happen. So I think Boston's best chance to win or go up would have been Steph Curry shooting so bad last night and then they still lost. So um, Curry scored 43 the last time he was in Boston. I'm just saying. <laughs> it, it could go somewhere, but you already know what it is, man. Salute to every single one of y'all. Salute to my guy, Sue Surf. Gang. Gang, gang.